All right, now we're going to move on to the direct square law, which is also referred to as exposure maintenance formula. It used to be called density maintenance formula, but as you know, we have moved on from density um, and we're using exposure. So it's similar to inverse square law, but this one we're finding mass and it's also a direct setup. So MAS one is directly across from distance one. MAS two is directly across from distance two. Okay. So the direct square law or exposure maintenance formula maintains the MAS needed to maintain receptor exposure at varying SIDs. What does this mean? You're going to use this formula if the question is asking you to figure out a new mass for a new SID to maintain the exposure. And one of the cheaters for me that I use, um, so if the distance is increased about two times, right, because we use 40 inches and 72 inches, we don't use 40 and 80. Um, so I use um, about four times more. So if I increase from 40 to 72, I simply multiply my mass by four. So MAS and distance use the direct square law. What does that mean? Well, if you increase one, then the other needs to increase to compensate. So if we increase our SID, we're gonna have to increase our mass and vice versa. So if you decrease your SID, you're gonna decrease your mass, right? So if you normally do something at 40 inches, and for some reason you need to do it um, at 72 inches, will you need more technique to adequately expose that part? Yes, right? So if I normally do a lumbar spine at 40 inches, and for some reason I have to do it at 72, will I just keep my technique the same? No, because I'm farther away, so I need more. So more SID needs more mass, and I simply multiply by 4. Um, but if you have to do the formula, I'll show you how to do the formula, okay? And so the reverse, if you normally do something at 72 inches and for some reason you need to do it at 40 inches, would you use the same technique or would you decrease the mass to not overexpose? And I hope you're going to say I would decrease my mass. So if the SID is decreasing, your MAS also has to decrease and I simply divide by 4 for that one. So practice question. If 10 mass was used to produce a satisfactory image at 100 centimeters distance, what new mass would be required at a distance of 180 centimeters? Here's some questions that I want you to ask yourself. What is this question asking me? What equation should be used to figure out the results? And in which direction should my answer go? So just remember, when increasing distance, mass must also increase to maintain the exposure. So let's break the question down. Let's find the keywords, right? That's the hint. 10 mass was used to produce an image at 100 centimeters. So we have an original mass, an original distance. And it's asking me what new mass will be required at a new distance. So what is this question asking me? To find the new mass for the new distance. Which equation should I use? I'm going to use the direct square law, also referred to as the exposure maintenance formula. Which direction should my answer go? So if I'm moving farther away, should my mass go up or should it go down? I'm hoping you say my mass is going to go up, right? That would make sense. So if you plug it into the formula, and again, here's the formula. It's similar to the inverse <coughs> square law, but remember, they're directly across from each other. So uh, mass 1 is going to be 10 mass. Distance 1 is that 100 centimeters. I'm looking for a new mass at 180 centimeters. So I plug in, I like to plug mine in in this list first and then put it into my formula, whichever way works for you. So my mass one is 10 mass, so that goes up here. I don't have a mass two, so I put an X here. Distance one was 100 centimeters, but that has to be squared, right? So that comes out to 10,000. Distance two is 180 centimeters, but again, that has to be squared. Don't forget to square those numbers or you won't get a number that makes sense. So uh, distance 2 squared goes at the bottom here. Then simply just cross, multiply, and divide, right? 10 multiplied by distance 2 divided by distance 1, and I get an answer of 32.4 mass. Does that make sense? Yes, right? I went from 10 mass at 100 centimeters to 32 mass at 180. Yes, I went up. That's what I wanted to do. This box down here shows you if you flip your distances, you're going to get a number that doesn't make sense, right? A number that goes down. 
So if you calculate this out and your number goes the wrong way, you're putting your distances or your MIS in the wrong location. So if your answer doesn't make sense, go back to your formula and make sure you put your factors in the right spot. Question two. A uh, radiograph was obtained at 8 mass at 180 centimeters distance. What new mass will be required at 152? Look through these questions, and we're going to break it down in a second here. Remember, when decreasing distance, MAS will also decrease. Okay, So we're going to find the keywords. Original mass, original distance, is asking me for a new mass at a new distance. So. What is it asking me? New mass and a new distance. Which equation? The direct square law. Which direction should my answer go? If I use eight mass at this distance, will I use a higher mass or a lower mass if I decrease my distance? And I'm hoping you said decrease your mass because the distance decreased. Simply plug your numbers in, okay, to the formula. So find your MAS one, which was eight. Uh, distance one was the 180, but remember, you gotta square it, don't forget that. MAS, or um, sorry, SID number two, so distance two, uh, squared again. I plug them into my formula, cross, multiply, and divide, and I get an answer of 5.7. Does that make sense? Yes, right, because I was using eight mass at 180, I've decreased my distance to 152, my number went down. If you put your numbers in the wrong spots, your number went up. Okay, so if your number doesn't make sense, look back to your equation and make sure you're putting your factors in the right spots, okay? Question three, uh, radiograph was obtained using 600 MA, uh, 0 0.035 seconds at 180 centimeters distance. What new mass will be required at a distance of 152 centimeters? All right, this one looks a little bit different, right, because it didn't give us an MAS. It gave us an MA and a time. Okay, so here's our keywords. So MA and time at an original distance. It's asking me for a new mass at a new distance. We're going to um, plug this in. The difference for this one is you have to do your MAS calculation first. So before you do anything else, I want you to calculate MAS. And remember, that's MA times seconds. So 600 MA times the seconds gives me a 21 mass. So that determines my MAS1. Plug in the rest of your factors. Simply cross, multiply, and divide. Right. So if I use 21 mass at 180 centimeters, I've decreased my distance to 152 centimeters. Should my number go down or should it go up? I'm hoping you said go down. So I got an answer of 15 mass. If I plugged in my factors, if my plugged in my distances in the wrong spots down here, my number went up. So if it goes up, that's not what I want. When would I actually use this? I use the direct square law when I have a scoliosis exam at our facility. Our cassette requires a 60 to 72 inch SID. So when my patient comes in, I look at their body habitus, and in my head I think, well, I, what would I use for their lumbar spine at 40 inches? And that's where I start my numbers. So we're going to use 20 as an example. Say I'd use 20 mass at 40 inches. Now I have to do a scoliosis exam at 72 inches. I simply multiply by 4. Do I break out a calculator and do the formula out? No, right? But that's just a cheater for... Um, kind of in the real world. All right, so direct, direct square law, exposure maintenance formula. You might see it um, written as either one of those on your ART exam. But essentially, it's when the question is asking you to determine a new mass and a new distance. Go basic. Are you increasing your distance from the source, which means getting farther away? You're going to need more mass to reach that patient or reach that part. Are you decreasing distance from the source or getting closer? You're going to need less mass. Just watch your formula. If your numbers don't make sense, um, then you probably set up your formula wrong. You probably put it, um, the distance is flipped or something like that. So just make sure you're um, using the correct formula. Okay, hope that helps.